everybody, I'm Gail Zimbel, the Education Outreach Coordinator for the Nine Mile Creek Watershed District. Now, a watershed, if you're not familiar, is any area of land that all drains to the same spot, or the same body of water. So in our case, that's Nine Mile Creek. So all of the rain and the snow that falls hits the high points of the watershed, or the boundaries, and then trickles down to the low spot, Nine Mile Creek. And I'm here today to be your personal tour guide for Nine Mile Creek itself. We're actually here at the source, or the headwaters, of Nine Mile Creek, and we're going to follow it downstream and see where it goes. So let's go. So here at the source of Nine Mile Creek, here at the headwaters in Hopkins, you can see that the creek's pretty small. It's pretty hidden in the trees, and people would walk right by it without noticing. So this is something that when you're taking a walk, or if you're ever up in Hopkins by Excelsior Avenue, you can look for that green sign and see if you can find the creek. So as we go on our tour of Nine Mile Creek, we'll notice that the watershed looks kind of different. So up here in Hopkins, if we look around at the watershed, we notice that it's pretty built up. There's a lot of buildings and roofs and driveways, parking lots. We call all of those spaces impervious surfaces because water can't get through them and filter down into the ground. So along with all of that impervious surface comes a lot of pollution as well. Things like grass, leaves, sticks, natural things, but also things like trash and fertilizer and salt. So all of these things end up in a drain or a storm drain like this one. And those drains go straight to the creek without getting filtered. So we'll take a look at the whole watershed as we're going downstream through the creek. But up here at the beginning of the creek, we know that there's a lot of impervious surfaces and possibly pollution. So the best thing to do is to clean all this stuff up and put it in the trash so that it doesn't go to the creek behind me. After Nine Mile Creek leaves Hopkins, it comes down here in a dyna behind the Creek Valley Elementary School. So it runs down underneath a highway or two and passes along through this forested area and winds its way down behind the Dinah High School as well. And you can check out some of our earlier videos on macroinvertebrates that we caught right down there to see what lives in the creek. But did you know there are actually two branches of Nine Mile Creek? That's right, so this is the north branch of Nine Mile Creek. Let's go to the other headwaters of the south branch and see where that one heads. So here we are at the second headwaters of Nine Mile Creek and this one looks a lot different from our last headwaters. We've got more trees, we've got more grass and plants, so this um, is a little bit of a healthier watershed for our creek. Now, this creek part, or this branch, the south branch, comes out of Minnetoga Lake, which is just up this way. And then eventually it'll flow down through Eden Prairie and Bryant Lake, which where, is where we're headed next. And then we'll go a little bit farther down to where the two branches combine. So from where we were up in Minnetonka at the headwaters, now we followed the creek down here to Bryant Lake Regional Park in Eden Prairie. And this is a really fun park to come to with your family because you can have a picnic, you can go fishing, you can go swimming. Behind me you see the swimming beach and they have lots of hiking trails as well as a dog park. So with the creek coming through here, there's all sorts of things that you can come and do to explore the lakes and the creeks in the watershed district. here behind the PIM Arts High School in Eden Prairie. And it flows through a little bit of a forested area here so it might be kind of hard to see it behind me. But this is just another of the places that the creek flows through that a lot of people don't even know about. So 
So we looked at the North Branch and the South Branch of Nine Mile Creek, but here they are coming together to form one creek that comes into Normandale Lake. So Normandale Lake in Bloomington is where both of the branches of the creek come together and it flows through the lake and then it winds its way down through the rest of Bloomington. So let's go check out the main stem of Nine Mile Creek. So after the two creek branches come together at Normandale Lake, Nine Mile Creek winds its way through Bloomington and comes down here through Moyer Park in Bloomington. And as you can see, this main stem looks a little bit different from the headwaters. It's definitely wider, it's faster, we can hear a lot more water running through it, but where does it end up going? Let's head downstream and find out. Part of our duties at the Watershed District is to also monitor Nine Mile Creek and see how healthy it is using different stream parameters. So we use things like the swamp station here to monitor those things. And inside, there's a bunch of equipment that monitors things like stream flow, how fast the stream is going, and other parameters like dissolved oxygen, phosphorus, even a little bit of salinity as well. And this helps us paint a bigger picture of how the creek is doing over the entire watershed. It's not just this one station. We have a few different ones scattered throughout the watershed along the creek. Nine Mile Creek is home to lots of different kinds of plants and animals, but one of my favorites is this one here called jewelweed. It's also called spotted touch-me-not because there are little spots inside the flower here. And touch-me-not because the seed pods, if they're ripe and you touch them, they explode! And that spring loading of those seeds helps distribute the seeds to other different places around where the plant lives. And actually, the leaves of this plant, if you have a mosquito bite or a little bit of stinging nettle on you, you can take one of the leaves and crush them up and rub it on the place where it's itchy and it'll make the itch go away. So it's a really good plant to know. We're almost to the end of Nine Mile Creek, everybody! Let's go! <sighs> we made it down to the mouth of Nine Mile Creek where it flows into the Minnesota River. And we are right now standing at the backwaters of the Minnesota River, and you can kind of hear traffic just a little bit that way, and that's where the actual Minnesota River is. But there are a lot of great plants around here and birds and animals, so this is a really great walk if you can ever make it down here with your family and friends. So the Minnesota River, which Nine Mile Creek flows into, leads to the Mississippi River. And they come together at the confluence, or Bedote, at Fort Snelling, um, a little bit past the actual fort itself. But if you've ever been down there, you can go and see where the actual rivers come together, the Minnesota and the Mississippi. So once they combine at Bedote, then they flow all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. So anything that we do on land here impacts all of those river systems as well as the Gulf of Mexico. So we need to be really careful about what we do on land, in our houses, on the streets, and also in our nature areas too. So based on all of these things that we've seen today in the tour of Nine Mile Creek, what places do you live close to on Nine Mile Creek? It flows through a lot of different cities. We started up at Hopkins and it flowed through Edina. And then we also had the South Branch that started in Minnetonka and flowed through Eden Prairie. And then they come together at Normandale Lake in Bloomington. And then they flow down here to the Minnesota River. So hopefully you have a spot that you can access Nine Mile Creek and make some cool new memories yourself.
Thanks for watching, everybody.